What's up, everybody? Hope everybody had a great weekend. Today is Monday, November 20th, and I am back with our contest winner, Matt King. Matt, what's going on, buddy? Hey, man, what's going on? Glad to be back. So we are, we're looking at your monitor tab here, and we've got some good things going on. If, uh, if you look in the very upper left-hand corner, you can kind of see our total account value hovering up over that $5,200, $52,000 mark. So we're up up a couple thousand bucks in your account, so that's always a good thing, right? That's uh, super awesome. I'm excited to, uh, I, was, I was excited to get into uh, Thinkorswim and uh, look at the numbers today. It was over the, over the weekend there. Yeah, so, so we've good. had so we've had a uh, we've had a few things go in our favor. We can kind of go down the line here on your on your monitor tab. You've got oil, which and actually we'll we'll go over that one kind of piece by piece. But um, yeah, let, let's just do that. Let's just go over each of the symbols on the analyze tab to give give everybody kind of a visual of where we're at. So yeah, go ahead and click on CL. Let's see what's going on here. So you can see uh, we've we've had a, a decent contraction in implied volatility in oil. We just actually put this one on last week, and we're all already up a couple hundred bucks. Not enough to take off yet, but we'll just continue to to watch oil. So, yeah, that one's looking good. We'll keep an eye on it. So far, so good. Then we've got our friend Natural Gas. Uh, kind of the same story, up a couple hundred bucks, but we just we need a little bit more uh, move up in both oil and that gas. They're down today. Um, but implied volatility is contracting nicely. Now we just need price to move up a little bit more, a little bit more into center and, uh, to give us a chance to book, book profits in both of those. Yep. And then NQ, which is our friend, the NASDAQ, who has been kind of our problem child to this point, uh, is, is doing okay. I mean, we've got a little bit of a contraction in implied volatility. We could use a little bit of a move in price down to to benefit that to to get into a little bit more profit but we're almost back to break even in the nq so we've you know we originally put on a position put on a strangle then we added another strangle that we had to adjust both of those uh but now now it's starting to starting to cooperate apparently that that whooping we put on it a couple weeks ago you know sent it back to where you're supposed to be <laughs> I so, got for the market going down. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's looking good. Um, not enough to take off yet. You know, I mean, think about this. When when you start to make adjustments, really, what your mindset should be is, yeah, we'd we'd like to get to profit for sure, but really, after you've had to make a couple adjustments, really, your goal should be to get back to break even. And so if we can, because if we can just, if we can put on trades and book winners, you know, so a lot of them will put on and just take off like we have, but, but then you're going to have the ones that, that go out of your range. You're going to have to make adjustments. And so if, if we can, if we can book our winners for 30, 40, 50% of max profit, and then our losers, we're able to manage and adjust through and get back to break even, that's the ultimate goal, you know? So we break even on our losers and we make money on our winners. And over time, that's, that's going to be a very profitable way to do it. Good rule of thumb. I like that. Now, that's not always going to be the case. We will take losers, unfortunately, from time to time. But, but yep. that, that's kind of the goal. So if you have to, if you don't have a choice. but Yeah. Uh, here you go. Now we've got bonds. So bonds is, mm -hmm. is very centered. So. The one thing to consider here is, okay, we're very centered. If, if price makes a decent move either up or down, our profit is basically going to gonna go down because we're, we're so centered. We're right there dead center in the middle of our, of our graph. So a couple of things to consider with this. A, we're up money in bonds. Um, if you go back to the monitor tab overall, uh, let's see where we are to date in our account in in ZB. So we we've made uh, in the in the March contract we're up 453, and in, in the December contract right below that we made 140. So we're up we're up let's say 600 bucks total in bonds. So it wouldn't be out of the question of taking this off, just as, as from a profitability standpoint. Even though we're not our quite at our target of, of max profit of where we want to take it off. What I'm thinking is because it's so centered, we book that profit. And the other 
the other component to this of, of that kind of bodes in our favor of, of wanting to take this off is if you go to the chart tab. And, I'm getting there. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, go to the chart tab. So, and to look at the implied volatility, we have to go to TLT. So you can either scroll up and click on it or you can, or you can just type it in there up in the, there you go. So you can see implied volatility is at, the IV rank is at 13, IV percentile is at 26. So, you know, we're at a point here where implied volatility is fairly low in there. And with implied volatility fairly high in several other symbols, it's kind of one of those questions you want to think to yourself, would I rather put on a new position, use that capital, put on a new position in something with high implied volatility, or would I rather just stay in this one and, you know, it'll, it, you know, if it sp spikes higher, that could hurt me. Uh, if it does go lower, obviously that would help. But we're in a we're in a range now where it's you know it's not above that fifty level where we like to enter new trades. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you know my my suggestion is say I'm going to say let's let's go ahead and book that profit and reallocate those dollars into into another symbol with higher implied volatility. I like it. That's a good idea. Cool. And so before we do that, let's just check out XRT as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back to Analyze tab. So XRT is, is acted nicely. Remember, we booked half these profits uh, before we reached kind of our target max profit because we wanted to use that capital to reallocate into something else. Um, and now we've got the, the remaining five contracts on here and we're to a point where we're kind of at that 40 to 40 plus percent of max profit. So we can go ahead and book profits here as well. Sounds good to me. Taking profits is always, always a good thing, right? Yep, and this this one's looking pretty good, so I'm happy with that uh, that choice. Yeah. Okay. Well, sounds good. Well, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, let's just start with XRT since we're here. Go ahead and highlight the positions down below the graph, and uh, let's close this out. Yep. We're looking at these ones right here, XRTs, and you can see everything fine this far down, right? I can. Yep. Okay. So we want to go oops, create a closing order by yep. and shoot get, for yeah probably get forty seven see if we can get filled at forty seven okay confirm and send and see if it happens fast <laughs> yeah it's a few cents few cents wide on the on the theoretical mid price so let's go ahead and and uh, actually let's just let's just let that sit and while we are waiting because we have other stuff to do uh, this is what I would this is what I would really do I would I would put in the order I want to get filled at and I would go do other things for a while to see if I could get filled before I adjust you know sometimes for the video purposes uh, we, we just go ahead and get filled right away, but we've got some other things to do. So let's let that set and, uh, and go to our next victim, which is <laughs> the bonds. Okay. Bonds. And, and yeah, same, same deal here. We're just going to, uh, buy back. Correct. So. Closing order or buy. Close that out for about a dollar twenty-seven, and we should get filled right away at a dollar twenty-seven on this one. Okay. See if my instincts are correct. I'd say they were. All right, so we're out of bonds. Well, that was. Well, that was the other one, but it looks like that was the bonds. Yeah, so. no, that was that was bonds. <laughs> yep. So we're good to go. So, um, so now what I'd like to do is, so now we've got, we've got on a uh, position in oil. Mm -hmm. We've got on a position in that gas, so we've got two energy uh, futures. We've got NASDAQ, which is stocks, and we've got XRT, which is stock, which we're getting ready to get out of. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've significantly lightened our load from stocks. You know, there's, there's implied volatility in a lot of stocks, but we had kind of held off on putting any new positions because I didn't want to get too overweighted in any one category. But, but now... Since we've lightened our load in, in stocks, I want to look at another stock-related stock either ETF or individual stock to put one on. 
And and one that we've kind of kind of discussed and looked at is Costco. So go ahead and click on Costco and go to the chart tab. So what you'll see here is, you know, they've they've just announced earnings back in early October, so we don't have to worry about earnings in this next cycle. And we've got implied volatility has is you know came all the way back up near 100. It's it's still very high, but it's come off its highs. It's about 88 on the percentile, and it's got an IV rank of 79. So a great candidate to be selling premium in. So I'd like to put on a trade in Costco. Sounds good to me. So one thing, um, one thing to consider is we're, we're looking at January now because uh, the days left to expiration in December is 25, which is a little bit less than we, than we like to, to deal with. So we're, we'll look at January, which has 60 days to expiration. And we're going to do something a little bit different. You know, in this, to this point, for this last month and a half that we've been trading in this account, we've done all strangles. We've, we've done some ETFs, mostly futures. In this case, we're doing an individual stock. And because of the, the buying power requirement that it would take to put on a strangle in Costco, I want to I want to have a, use a little bit better use of capital and, and let's go ahead and put on an iron condor in Costco. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to, uh, to do do something a little bit out of the norm and try that out. So. Yeah, and we do, you know, with alert subscribers, for example, we do a lot of iron condors just because, mm -hmm. um, you know, you are defining your risk. It's a lower buying pa power uh, requirement versus a strangle in a lot of cases. Uh, so, so this is a very, uh, very common trade that we we do a lot. But first time uh, with you on this coaching session, so uh, go ahead and go ahead and walk us through an iron condor and, and let me know when you need a, if you stumble and you need any any help. If I need any assistance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're looking at something around that 20, uh, 20 delta mark. We have one here at eighteen. Um, so we're just going to come down here, and we're at the um, the January sixty days to expiration. Mm -hmm. um, I know that was already we had already kind of jumped in there, but uh, let's jump in here and keep me from doing anything dumb. Sell or selling, not buying, and. Instead of doing the strangles, we are doing the iron condor. So we're just going to take a look at this. And 183, it all, we're, got a, we're looking at five points spread uh, with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it automatically put that in for uh, the, 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 uh, the call side. So we're going to look manually, look over here around 20. And it starts at 160, so we're just going to put that in over here on the put side. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the five points, we bring it down to 155 for the uh, defined risk portion of this. Mm -hmm. Correct. And from there, we would just analyze, I believe, analyze the trade. Perfect. Then we can set our set our slices. Break even. Yeah, they, they actually happen to already be there, but yeah, just that's perfect. Oh, is it uh, cool? That's, that's okay. <laughs> so there's one other thing that we're missing here to to get our probabilities correct. Oh, let's see. Is it the contracts? It's not the contracts. We'll this deal is, with that here in a second. As I said, it's. It's like I messed something up because it's uh you didn't you didn't ninety nine percent yeah you didn't mess anything up it simply just has to do with with where the calendar was set with uh, in toss at this point so yeah. yeah you just need to make sure that that matches up with your expiration date uh well what's the expiration so it's the date, date. that's in that bottom left corner of your graph it's January twentieth January twentieth bottom left I just want to make sure that I'm seeing it. The one up on your graph, the expiration date. It's on your not graph. this one. No. Oh, okay. There it is. That's yeah, what you're you talking about. Yep. Okay. So, sure. So you can do it day by day, or you can just open up the little calendar if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I don't do that very much. <laughs> well, and a lot of nobody times, got time for that. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Matt. To be fair, uh, most of the time it is. It is. It automatically kind of 
goes to your expiration date for whatever reason when we were messing around with it before it was on a different date so no big deal cool anyway um that brought it down to uh 60 which is a little less than what we're used to with the strangles but uh but uh, like you had mentioned you know that's what's going to happen with the uh the the iron condors yeah if, if we're choosing around or if, if we're selling around the 20 delta uh, options the ones that the the strikes that we sell that that's going to give us you know twenty percent on one side twenty percent on the other side add those together that's forty percent you th- you take the inverse of that and that gives us a sixty percent probability of success and and you know obviously the difference between this and a strangle is we're defining our risk uh, we're having we're uh, we're we're using a lower amount of buying power to put the trade on because mm-hmm. it is defined risk. Uh, what we're giving up is we're giving up a little bit of profit potential and we're giving up a little bit of probabilities. So with a strangle, you're going to have a higher probability of success. You're going to have a higher profit amount or you're going to collect a higher credit. Uh, and, and so what you're giving up for this is you get defined risk and you get a little bit lower probability of success. But both are great trading vehicles. Both are uh, you know vehicles you want to use when you're trying to sell premium when implied volatility is high. Uh, it really just comes down to a determination of what the efficiency of buying power is for your specific account. And then do you want uh, defined risk or undefined risk? And so there's no right or wrong answer. It's just kind of a, a preference and how it fits into your overall portfolio. Uh, in this case, because we want to we want to reserve some buying power for other potential opportunities uh, we're going to define our risk, and on a stock that trades at a, you know 170 bucks, doing a strangle uh, can use a decent amount of buying power. And in fact, let's let's go ahead and set that set up a strangle real quick, and, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, yeah, what do you want me to set up a strangle in? Just uh, yeah, with... in Costco. Yeah, so so go ahead and go to the trade tab. Back to the trade tab. Back to the trade tab. Set it with the same thing here. Yeah. But so, so, so. Strangle. So when it comes time to put this on, make sure I hit the right button. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but, whoops, my bad. So we've got the 183 call, so the put. It's 2019, so 160 yeah. on the put side. And you're, you're becoming a pro at this. I, don't I know. To tell you what to do. So, so if you can just go ahead and hit confirm and send, you don't even have to analyze it. Oh, okay. See, that's gonna for one contract, it's gonna take over twenty three hundred dollars. Okay, and we've got a max profit of two sixty nine. So we'll, we and we would be managing that at 30, 40, 50 percent of max profit. So let's say we'd be taking out, you know, let's say a hundred bucks of profit. Well, we're using twenty three hundred dollars of capital to to make a hundred bucks, um, you know, I, I just I look at that as not a very efficient use of capital, especially for the account size that we're trading and all the other trades that we have on and, and want to potentially put on. Okay. So that's why I, I just wanted to show that real quick, just just to give you an idea of why we're doing an iron condor over a strangle in this case. Okay. So you can go back to the analyze tab. Okay. And still got my iron condor up here. Got it. Got it all set. So you can see we have uh, ten contracts, I, which I said bump up. Yep, I did put that up to ten. Yeah. So. So what that's uh, going to what that's going to give us is a max profit. If you hover over the middle part of the graph, there we've got a max profit of one thousand two twenty. And if you go over to one of the the flat flat sides there, you've got a, a max. Risk and that's the buying power that we would use is a little over thirty seven hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So the one kind of rule of thumb with iron condors is, is we usually want to collect about a third the, the credit that we collect or the max profit that we have. We want that to be around a third at least of of our max risk. Now we're we're right there. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but this is uh, that's just kind of a rule of thumb to kind of make sure that you got the the trade and the strikes in the right place along with the probabilities. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and try to ship this out. And and we're not going to get filled at 122. Why don't you kick that down to $1.20? Kick it down two cents. There we go. 
and let's right click and confirm and send. Okay. And just hit the send button. That was fast. There we go. Sold, 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 sold. Right. And I believe they're still waiting on the XRT to um, buy back as well. Correct. Good call. So. I almost forgot about XRT. So, yeah, go ahead and actually what you can do is you can go to your trade tab. Trade tab. And you can go down to the, your orders there on the left, and you you can change that drop down from orders all. Oh, uh, here. Yeah, change that to working only. And that'll show us our working order, and then you can right click and uh, cancel replace. And wow, I'm surprised we're not getting. So go ahead and kick it up to 48. Remember, Confirms. we're yeah, we're buying it back, so we're gonna have to pay up a penny instead of down. Yeah. Uh, that one went went quickly. It looks like and that's what it was trading at. So, All right. <clears throat> All right, so we're we're good here. Uh, we do have we do have some capital that, that to put to use, but um, I'd like to I'd like to wait. You know, if if we get some more downside in the stock market, you know, here over the next day or two, that's really going to pump up IV. So I'd like to uh, stick with what we've got now. We've got Costco, we've got the Nasdaq, we've got uh, Nat Gas, and we've got oil. So good little diversified portfolio going on. Yep. I like that. I like getting in here and taking a look at it. Even, uh, oh, wait, that was the wrong one I was looking. Even NAS, NASDAQ's up. Uh, we're in the hole at 35 when we started this call. We were in the hole at uh, around 150, 200 bucks. So it's coming up coming or going back. down, whatever, whichever way you want to look at it. So. I told you, NASDAQ owed us money. They're, they're just paying us back what they owe us. Yep, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Break even and take a little bit to boot. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, Matt. Well, we'll sign off here. Uh, have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, everybody. All right. Take care. Thanks.